So have you ever noticed when you're taking your dog for a walk, for example, how it, you know, it's mildly interested in what it's seeing, but it seems to be far more engaged and absorbed by its olfactory environment. It is smelling things. It is, it is sniffing its stuff. Um, you know, dogs have so many more, um, you know, olfactory receptors. Um, they have much greater sensitivity uh, to odorants that are, you know, present in their environment. They, they care a lot more about it, too. Um, they, um, for example, uh, get very interesting sort of temporal information uh, by what they are smelling because, you know, if another dog peed, you know, if it's fresh pee, it'll have a different smell than if it's been there for quite a while. So it, it gives them information about who was present in their environment, in their neighborhood, and, you know, when they were actually present. So they're very interested in, you know, uh, exploring the olfactory environment as they, you know, um, walk around you know, on a leash uh, with you. And you may be like, hey, come on, we got to keep moving. But they're, they're really engaged in, in you know, um, their olfactory environment. Um, you may also notice your dog, or if you grew up in a farm, you may notice, you know, uh, horses and goats and, you know, other animals doing this. They kind of, like, get close to something and they, like, open up their, <laughs> their, their, their lips and they expose the teeth. And it seems like they're sucking something in and pulling something in. This is called the flamen response. And the flamen response is really interesting. So it turns out that um, there are uh, like um, additional uh, like uh, olfactory receptors in a structure called the, it's called the vomeronasal organ. And uh, the vomeronasal organ actually sits, I'm going to show you this coyote skull again. You can see hopefully these beautiful, like little, it's like a little slide, this, they're, they're called these little wing-like uh, bones. It's like a little channel there. That's called the vomer bone. And um, it's right in the middle of the turbinates, you can sort of see. And that's where there are cells. And then, um, I don't know how we'll see, the, we'll see this, but like I've got an image there. But yeah, you see, if I turn, this is the, the front of the coyote skull. If I turn it over, you can see right there in the mouth, at the, behind the front teeth, are those holes. Um, they're actually, that's where the, 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 um, the dendritic sort of projections of the, the vomeronasal organ, the, the cells that sit in that vomer bone, you know, with, which has these wing-like projections. It's called, they're called the lay for wings. Um, they, they send their axons, uh, sorry, their dendrites into the back of the mouth, the roof of the mouth. Um, and so they're stimulating with the chemicals that they bring in uh, those cells. And then their other poles, their axonal poles, work their way up into the cribriform plate through those uh, holes basically in their skull um, uh, and they they go to this is looking at you can see here the bulb is right here this white part right there and then these are the tracks these are the axons of the mitral cells heading back these are also the axons of those uh, the vomeronasal cells the cells that are in that um, you know resting in that bone in the nose um, they, they bypass the bulb they don't go to mitral cells they don't make a um, uh, a synapse there, but they do go back to structures like um, the amygdala, you know, for sort of emotional responses to what they're, they're smelling, um, and also the hypothalamus, which is involved in uh, some sort of sexual responses to what they're smelling. So this is sometimes referred to as cranial nerve zero, uh, and it's uh, part of the uh, the flamen response. That 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 is a, a like a, a vomeronasal organ response. Um, and they're, they're um, reportedly, you know, dogs and other animals are detecting certain classes of odorants that we call pheromones that have some kind of significance, social significance um, in terms of, you know, uh, mate selection or, you know, uh, sexual behavior, uh, et cetera. So in humans, interestingly, we have the same kind of openings, um, you know, behind the, uh, the teeth, actually. Um, but, and there are, there is, there, there are some that, that suggest that we have a vomeronasal organ as well, um, but it gets covered, it, it's open and, and uh, available for detection um, during fetal development, uh, but it seals up with a membrane, uh, you know, before birth. Um, but it's thought that maybe some chemicals that are introduced into the mouth, say by kissing, for example, could work their way in and also stimulate uh, cranial nerve zero in humans.